Hi, welcome to Arabella's Reading Corner. I'm Arabella, and today we will be reading Finding Narnia, the story of C.S. Lewis and his brother. Jack and Marnie weren't just brothers. They were best friends, but they were very different. From the beginning, it was Jack who dreamed up stories of other worlds. There's Jack and Marnie on their bicycles. Marnie liked to sit in the wide picture window of their new house and watch the busy world of the Belfast shipyards. He could see teams of men hammering sheets of metal over the skeletons of huge ocean liners. Jack preferred to look through the window of his imagination. He browsed the bookshelves that lined the walls. When he read about Balder the Brave, who was so bright that light could shine through him, the story was more real to him than any ocean liner. Sometimes Warney pretended to be an Indian Raja. He drew maps of railways with trains that crisscrossed the vast Indian content on a strict schedule. Sometimes Jack pretended to be a brave knight. He sketched a map of a dagger-shaped isle ruled by a mouse, ruled by a mouse king whose castle was under attack. Once in a while, Warney's Raja would visit Jack's island and help the knight defend the castle. And every now and then, Jack's knight would visit the Raja and ride a train through the Indian hill country. In spite of their differences, it was always fun to play together. exploring the long hall of the new house. In a little room next to the attic, full of hat boxes and steamer trunks, Jack found an old wardrobe. He turned the knob. The hinges creaked. He sputtered and coughed. The smell of mothballs made him gag. But he burrowed behind the rough wool and tickly fur anyway. What if the wardrobe had no end, he wondered. Warney stayed outside. Perhaps he even warned Jack. Don't shut yourself in. The brothers always looked out for each other. When Jack and Lorne's mother fell ill, the house was busy with doctors coming and going, and strange medicine smells wafted down the long hallways. Downstairs, their father paced the big, empty rooms. Upstairs, Jack made his own imaginary world, and Warney joined him. They called it Boxin. Jack drew a map of Boxin's teeming capital city. He sketched the Parliament House, the stock exchange, shipyards, a train station, and a music hall. Warney designed a steamship to travel from Boxen to India and back. He included an engine room, a telegraph, and an anchor winch. Jack wrote Bont's Boxen's newspaper. Warney made Boxen's railroad schedule, and together they held a double coronation where Jack and Warney wore their crowns and smiled and waved. day as they played in the small room in the big sad house, Jack wondered, what if they could escape to Boxen and stay there? But when
when their mother died, their father sent Jack and Lorne away to boarding school. They dressed up in stiff etong collars, awkward knickerbocker pants, and conical bowler hats, and crossed the Irish Sea to England. Jack hated the strange English accents and flat, brown fields. He feared the headmaster with his thick beard and heavy cane, and he never got to read the stories he loved. Instead, he worked on endless math problems. He longed for the holidays when he and Lorne could return to the attic and box in. Only then could Jack wonder, what if? Many years passed. The whole world went to war. Separated in different regiments, Jack and Lorne worried about each other. So they decided to be in the war. When the war ended, Jack became a teacher at Oxford. He was an important man who gave serious lectures and wrote long books. But sometimes he saw things through the window of his imagination. Warney continued to work for the army. Whether he was stationed in Colchester, Woolwich, or Shanghai, he sat behind a desk and typed forms. Long forms and short forms, forms in black ink and forms in red ink. Long last, Warney retired from the army and moved in with Jack. Once again, the two brothers lived together in a spacious house whose walls were lined with books. There was even a wardrobe, the same wardrobe from their old home in Ireland, where they used to pretend they were princess of Boxen. Another terrible war broke out. Families in London sent their children away to the countryside to be safe from the bombs. On Sundays, Jack noticed the church was full of refugee children, squirming uncomfortably on unfamiliar pews among unfamiliar people. He didn't know much about children, but he figured he and Warney could help out. how two girls came to stay with Jack and Warney. One rainy day, the girls were exploring the house and they found the old wardrobe. They turned the doorknob. The hinges creaked. They sputtered and coughed. The smell of mothballs made them gag. The girls asked Jack, what's on the other side? The question opened a creaky door in Jack's mind. For the first time in a very long time, he began to wonder, what if? What is he thinking? Scritch, scratch. He wrote and wrote. Every time he paused to dip his pen in ink, a new idea came to him. First the lamppost and fawn came alive. Then two boys and two girls entered through a wardrobe. Tip-tap. Warney deciphered Jack's inky scribbles and typed a clean copy on his royal typewriter. The story reminded him of Boxen, but the story wasn't about Boxen. That story ended long ago. This story was, out, was about a place called Narnia. Covered in snow, Narnia still glows with light from an enchanted lamppost. A fawn with an umbrella steps from behind the trees. A family of 
with beavers waits in the bushes. A white witch glides on a sled. And a majestic lion watches them all. I hope you enjoyed this book.